Hey guys, how's it going? Up top, I want to let everybody know that this video contains spoilers about Ordeal Call 2, so if you would like to avoid spoilers for that, come back in two years. As to why I'm talking about this, and I'm usually staunchly against spoilers, an exceeding amount of art on Twitter, as well as some people who don't know how to keep their mouths shut, have made it so that this is a plot point that I am now very much aware of. So, with the release of Ordeal Call 2, something that has never before happened in Fate happened. An entire class of servants has canonically left Chaldea. While I don't exactly have all of the details about the why, from my understanding the commonly said phrase is that the goals of the Avengers and the goals of Chaldea no longer align with one another. Avengers are beings that, by nature, avenge, that is, take out their rage against those who have wronged them. The goal of Chaldea is to restore humanity to what it was and defeat the alien god. This clashes directly with the whole get revenge thing, as this would restore many of the things that the Avengers are actively trying to destroy therefore making it a paradox as to why they would help us at all. While I'm fuzzy on the details, and that could very well just be completely incorrect nonsense that I just said, supposedly you were given an option at the end of Ordeal Call 2 as to what our plan of action is, and the repercussions of our decision was that the Avengers quote-unquote went on ahead of us. Now, as to what that means, I've seen some people say that they're waiting for us back in the real Chaldea, that they have severed their contract with us but are independently manifested elsewhere, that they are living in our shadow and watching over us but won't intervene, or that they have just returned to the throne of heroes, etc, etc, etc. The primary takeaway that I do know for a fact is that they are gone. This stands as a bit of a problem, because Dante's actually had a relatively important sub-role in Chaldea of protecting the Master of Chaldea from dream-based attacks, and while I'm not sure if this is canon, I believe Abigail has taken up that mantle for the time being. After the events of Ordeal Call 2, the majority of the Avengers are now labeled as Link Lost. This is differentiated from Dad Lost in that it is possible to restore this Link in the future, though the when, how, and if on that is to be seen. I keep using the term all Avengers are gone, but that's not fully accurate. In fact, the main crux of what this video will be is going to be talking about those who chose to stay. So let's start with those who are gone. Dante's, Jalter, Gorgon, Lobo, Salieri, Tyra, and Nito Chris Alter. Something to note is that these are all true Avengers that made the decision to align themselves with Chaldea. Their original class is that of the Avenger class, with the one exception of Nito Chris Alter. I'm not counting Tyra here because she's Tyra, not Ushi. This seems to be the linchpin in deciding who stays and who's left. So with that in mind, the current resident Avengers that we do have are Angra Mainyu, Mount Nobu, Space Ishtar, Summer Kama, Ranmaru, Summer Eris, Summer Chloe, Ushi Gozen, Marie Alter, and the Count of Monte Cristo. So let's get into why these ones were allowed to stay. Let's start out by singling out a handful of them here. Summer Servants. Discussing the why of Summer Servant classing is a fool's errand. Summer in FGO is a time when the floodgates of what makes a servant what are open fully. It is a free-for-all with the classing being whatever the devs think is the most interesting, with a funny label slapped onto it to give some lore relevance. So Kama avenging her previous failure to deceive the master, Eris avenging the fact that nobody liked her original event, and Chloe avenging all of the deadline of Dojins she's making people right stick around just because it is an altered spirit graph. The first real Avenger who decided to stick around is Angra Mainyu. This is because Angra functionally doesn't exist in the game. He is never mentioned anywhere outside of a handful of events, and even then I believe he's only mentioned by name in the Fate Zero collaboration. This is a servant that isn't real. However, we know that he is real and we do interact with him if he has opted to grace your Chaldea. So why does he get to stay? Genuinely, I believe that is because his goals go against the goals of the class in general. While Angra is a dirty little stink rat, he seems to be much more concerned about just being a bum and doing what he wants as opposed to following the grand mission of seeking vengeance. Angra just wants to be Angra and to do Angra things, therefore he probably left the call to leave on red. Mount Nobu is an interesting one because Ascension 1 is interchangeable with Archer Nobu. They are treated as the exact same being. Ascension 2 seems to be a different aspect of Nobu, namely the less mature and male version of herself, Oda Kipushi. And then there's Mount Nobu. Mao is 100% the Avenger aspect of this otherwise Archer Spirit origin. Mao encapsulates the combination of rage, torment, fear, and death that Oda Nobunaga wrought throughout Japan. The declaration made by him on a letter naming himself as the Demon King of the Sixth Heaven sealed his name in history as a figure that planned to take all of Japan for himself and trample everyone in his way. So then, why did Mao not leave? The practical reason is that they couldn't, or rather wouldn't, remove Nobunaga from the game in its entirety. Theoretically, they could just get rid of the Mao side of her, 
but that also feels like it'd be more trouble than it's worth. The more lore-centric reason would be that Mal isn't avenging against people, per se. Mal's vengeance is sworn at a country, and restoring that country so that she can once again possibly take control of it means that her interests are still aligned with ours in restoring humanity. She recognizes that a kingdom without subjects is just an empty land, and therefore needs people to rule over to make her revenge true. Space Ishtar, and by extension Ran Maru, are not beholden to any rules of their class. As they are servant versus servants, they are not expressly summoned to Chaldea in the traditional sense, but rather are beings that exist in a parallel universe to ours who interact with us. As such, they don't follow the return call when they feel we are no longer aligning with their goals. In the case of Space Ishtar, she wants to repopulate the galaxy with humans the old-fashioned way, and Ran Maru... Let's talk about Ran Maru. Ran Maru is the most complicated figure to peg down as to how they operate for a variety of reasons. See, with Space Ishtar and every other servant versus servant, we do summon them. While they exist as beings, independently from the throne of heroes and normal servants, we do use a summoning circle to bring them to Chaldea. We have to roll the gacha and they have to answer our call. Idol X doesn't count for this because we have to summon her berserker form first, thus establishing a connection. Ran Maru just shows up. She comes flying through a wall on her floating space sword and says that she's ours to command. In the case of every other welfare servant in the game, they are either summoned by us at some point, is a living human or entity that followed us back to Chaldea, or were summoned elsewhere and we teamed up with them. Rain Maru is a 100% independent existence that just happens to be working alongside us. Technically, to comply with the law, she should be classified as an employee of Chaldea rather than a summoned servant or familiar, because she isn't one. Rain Maru is better anchored into our reality right now than Da Vinci because in the event that Da Vinci's model is destroyed, she will be returned to the throne of heroes. But if Ran Maru dies, she will re-manifest somewhere in the servant verse after some time and then come back to our side afterwards. Ran Maru single-handedly breaks the majority of established rules in the fake canon. She is a being that has pledged her life and loyalty to us and will likely continue to serve us well after the events of FGO have come to a close, assuming that we survive them. So, with that said, quite frankly, I don't think she gives a damn about leaving with the other Avengers. Next up is Ushi Gozen. If you have beaten Id, then once she is summoned, she has a unique voice line stating that she will disappear soon. The implication of this is that she herself is beholden to the Avenger recall and does plan to comply with it, but for the time is putting it off. Gozen's reasoning for sticking around is relatively simple. Genuinely, I believe that she still feels obligated to help fulfill Yui's wish of creating a peaceful world. Despite Yui no longer being her master, and despite nearly accomplishing this task in the Samurai Remnant collaboration, it is a wish that is yet to be finished. At her core, Gozen still shares some aspects from Raiko, one of which is this earnest desire to see things through to the end. So until either Yui's wish is granted, or she feels it is no longer attainable, I believe that Ushi Gozen will stick around. Marie and Dante's are both so new that I don't really know what their deal is, and so I don't really have too much to say. What I know is that Marie Alter hates you, she hates everything about you, and is likely sticking around with the sole intent of tormenting you. That said, she does have a line about being okay with you bathing with her, which is interesting. Take that as you will. From what I've gathered from her dialogue, she's essentially sticking around and watching us, attempting to find an opening when we ourselves may turn to evil and oppression, and therefore have a valid reason to kill us. Take this with a grain of salt as well. Monty, on the other hand, is like Ushi Gozen, remarking that he won't be around here for very long. From his dialogue, it is implied that he is just as surprised to be summoned as we are to see him, so he simply offers us his strength until he does vanish. Monty is unique, so he's more or less here until his time runs out, hence the comically named Bad Link status that he gets. So, that is the reasonings, but now we have to ask the important question. What does this mean for the future of the Avenger class? Well, to assuage the fear that we will never see any more Avenger servants, I don't think that's the plan. I think that the devs will still add in Avengers, probably some are servants and welfares, but may still add in the normal Avenger as well, but with differing reasonings as to why they are summoned and can remain. I will say, don't expect any Avengers anytime soon, not just because of it, but because we just got three of them this year and it's been four months. Also, I mentioned this earlier, but I would like to say this is not the last we will see of these characters by any stretch of the imagination imagination. Like, Dante's and Jolta are insanely popular, and other characters that people love like Nido Alter, Lobo, and Gorgon are all fan favorites. Honestly, the funniest possible loophole that they could pull is making one of the female Avengers a summer servant and claim that it's because their class changed that they can stick around now. I do know Jolter's summer is gone, but imagine that Gorgon just shows up as a pretender in a bikini. Realistically though, I see this as being something that will eventually culminate in the Avengers showing back up for whatever the final showdown is to assist Caldea Solomon style. The other thing I want to put to bed is the thought that FGO is going to do this with other extra classes as well. 
Realistically, the only one I could possibly see them do this with is the foreigners in an all-out war against the old gods. While this isn't outside of the realm of possibility, I think it would be excessive and indicative to people that FGO was building to a finality of some variety. Rather than a full class purge, the only group I could see being made to leave Chaldea, or possibly leaving of their own volition, is the Beasts. This is because they are naturally opposed to what Chaldea is doing. Will they do this though? I mean, probably not because of the incredibly independent nature of Beasts. It would take some major world it would take some major world fuckery to cause them all not only to cooperate but to band together and make an agreement to leave. It just really doesn't feel like something that could possibly happen. So then we are left with the inevitable question, what does all of this actually mean for the future of FGO? Well, I have a couple of theories. With the end of id, we have one more chapter in Ordeal Call. It's no secret that Ordeal Call is meant to serve as kind of an in-between from the Lost Belts and whatever is the next big plan thing that they have, not too dissimilar to the Epic of Remnant chapters. By the time that we finish Ordeal Call 3, we will likely have gotten the third Olga, and we'll probably have to defeat the fourth Olga after the fact. Once we do, we will be able to fight whatever the big boss is and theoretically restore humanity. So what comes next is very much going to be determined by the groundwork that is being laid down today. It has been made abundantly clear that they are not out of ideas and are willing to raise the stakes in the game. FGO as a game will exist for as long as it's making them money, and given its insane popularity, at least in Japan, I assume that we will see future FGO content for the coming years. I think that part 3 is where we will actually deal with Avengers and the possibility of getting them back in Chaldea. It will likely be in a story chapter where through some bullshit the Avengers are attempting to avenge all over the place and we have to save them or kill them. Hard to say, but I would put my money on part 3 being where the Avengers return. As for changes with the game in general, I would say that I do not expect an FGO 2 as much as I expect in FGO 2.0. I think that with the 10th anniversary, which will be next year as of the recording of this video, it's possible that we see a full game overhaul, something that changes the engine it's running on, the graphics, the character models, the animations, and the overall presentation. What I don't see them doing is ending service of FGO 1.0 and forcing everyone to restart in FGO 2. They are smart enough as a company to know that that is an awful idea and that no consumer is going to buy that. I only go to bring all this up because I've seen some Doom posting about this being a signal for the end of FGO, and it's something directly tied to the Avengers talked about in this video. Only the future will tell, but I choose to wait and hope for a better continuing future of the game. With that in mind, thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can support me by subscribing or checking out my other stuff in the links down below. Let me know what you thought in the comments, but for now guys, keep your chin up, peace.